When we're establishing existing conditions, it really starts with knowing how Civil 3D handles points. We have to go back to basic geometry when we're working with points in Civil 3D. So what is a point? Geometry points are zero dimensional, meaning they don't have volume, area, length, or any other dimension. Although if geometry points are zero dimensional, how do you define or visually display a point? Many times we're used to X marks the spot, but as soon as we mark the spot, the point is no longer zero dimensional. When we draw points with survey or existing conditions, they typically fall within two categories. Points that identify a linear shape or points that identify objects. Points that identify a linear shape can include curb lines, corners of buildings, or a center line of a road. Having an X marks the spot point isn't as critical for a linear shape as it is for identifying objects. Points that identify objects include marking the location of trees, manholes, utility poles, and different structures. These points symbolize the object you're marking, so it really should resemble the structure the point is identifying. Displaying something visually in Civil 3D goes back to our styles, so we'll take a look at that in this video. Point styles control the visual look of the point marker, or the X. I'm in the 0301 point styles drawing, and you'll notice that I already have a line drawn and we're going to create some points within this drawing. So first go to the home ribbon and to the create ground data panel. Now under the points there are many different means to create points in this drawing. Let's choose the most popular option point creation tools. We get a little panel right here. Click these two chevrons to maximize it going to open this up just a little bit more so we can see what we're doing here. Now this new panel right here gives us the same options as this little drop down gives us. On the far left we're going to create points manually. Now whenever we click on this chevron if we expand it out it gives us a list of all of our command settings for point creation. Now do you remember when we were working with command settings within the settings tab for the drawing itself? Now you're starting to see how these command settings all come into play, right? They control the default layer of points as well as the default styles. If I expand out point creation, you'll notice we have some controls when we're creating a point. Now for this drawing, it's set so that we won't be prompted for an elevation. See how right now it's set to automatic rather than manual? We've got that set to automatic and we have a elevation set for that default which is 100 so we won't be prompted for an elevation as we're creating our points. Again, that means that Civil 3D will always enter a default elevation of 100 with every point that I create. I can change this option at any time and have it prompt for elevations by choosing Manual. We can also do this with point descriptions. Right now it's set to automatic. We can also set that to Manual but I'm going to leave that on automatic and you'll notice that we have a default description of FH for fire hydrant. Once all of these command settings have been taken care of we can go ahead and create our new point. We'll have a point with a number assigned to it with an FH description with an elevation of 100. Let's click this option to bring it back to automatic. Let's collapse this chevron. Let's go over to the far left.
and manually create a point. You'll see in our command line that it's asking us to please specify a location for the new point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on my object snap by typing in F3. And I'm going to change some of the settings here. Right now we've got it set to endpoint. I'm going to leave it just like that. Click that first point. And you'll see how it automatically gives us a point number one, elevation of 100, and a description of FH for fire hydrant. Let's go ahead and do that for the next point. I'm going to type in END for endpoint instead do that as well. There's lots of ways of, of doing things in Civil 3D and you'll see now we have a point number two with the same elevation and the same description. And you'll notice that I wasn't prompted for any point information. The description and elevation were automatically added. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this command by pressing the escape key. If I select one of my points you'll notice that the contextual ribbon shows up. Let's go ahead and click on properties within the ribbon and I'm going to go ahead and dock this off to the right hand side. So since I've already selected a point, the properties palette shows me that point. Point number one, description FH, Tokogo point, and I have some other options here. I've got style and point label style. Now because it's a civil 3D object it shows up as a Kogo point and has two options. Anytime you're working with coordinate labels you will have two styles the marker and the label. So you can see right here in the properties panel we've got the style of the marker itself and the point label style which is the label. This applies for a point but it can also apply to station offset labels for alignments for example or elevation labels for surfaces. Let's zoom in on point number one. Come back to the properties palette and change the style by navigating to IMV util water hydrant. See how that changed? After selecting the style, you'll notice how the marker has changed. I wanted the marker to symbolize the object that it's marking. I haven't changed the label, so it shows up as a default label. We can see that right here. Let's change the point label style to just description. Now it's showing us just the description of that point. Now look at the grip in the middle. It's a rotated square. There's a rotation of 45 degrees which actually controls the coordinate. If I select it and I move it, it'll change the coordinate and the Z elevation. Although if I hover over it, I get a contextual menu. With the point grip you have many different options. If we hover over our marker, you can see all these different options. Let's go ahead and rotate our marker uh, about like so. Now my fire hydrant is rotated, but my label isn't. If I pick the label grip, I can move the label and the contextual menu opens up independent of the marker itself. So let's go ahead and pick the grip and move it to wherever we want. Now you'll see there are some additional grips that are now on our label. These grips are for a leader. When we move a label it goes into what's known as a drag state. When the drag state opens a leader with an arrow could show up depending on the style. But since this style doesn't display a leader it won't show one although the grips for it still show up. If I don't like these changes, I can float over these grips and choose to reset the label. Or I could reset everything, my marker included. If I choose to reset all, the marker will rotate back to its original rotation 
and the label returns to its default state. Working with points is all about visual control. Know that you're dealing with two different styles, one for the point marker and one for the point label.